McNatt is here and they are bringing in their stuff. And it's a lot of stuff. Looks like shiny new scaffolding. Okay, McNatt came, started setting up the scaffolding, and then they left to go get the boards that go on top to make the work surface for them to stand on. So since this is here, I've been using it to climb up and trim up this palm tree. It, gone, it had gone quite wild against the house and we don't want it hitting into the window once it's up. So normally I wouldn't trim it up quite so brutally, but we need it gone for a workspace. Hi, I'm Janie from the Lee Kempner House, and it is an exciting day. Ben and um, Josh, I'm so horrible with names, are here from McNatt, and they have already started. They set up the scaffolding. They're double-checking measurements on the window. I'm trying to finish up this last window and get it out of the way, but I didn't want to do it before they got here because I have wanted to know how much of the glazing putty Ben like to put in before the window goes in to kind of seat that window and keep it from rattling and like we talked about not to have any small pressure points like grit or piece of uneven wood that would put pressure on the glass and break it so I'm going to get this done and get it stood up against the wall and give them some more room to work they picked the window they wanted to start working with and they had made these little, uh, I don't know what you would call them, little sloped pieces of wood that match the angle of the sill so that they can stand this thing up and balance it easy. These are very tall and very heavy and these poor guys take them in and out so many times during the course of this because everything has to be fit just exactly right. What'd you call those? The ears? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a fit. I'll leave them. It's gonna be close. Never an Aggie, so sawing horns off was never my. I'm an Aggie, <laughs> but we did a lot of it. <laughs> I said way too much fun in the past putting a piece of wind, uh, glass in and having having a crack or something in your food. Right when you go in, yeah. Something like this is definitely wanted to be avoided. <laughs> These are a little pricier than a normal. Not glass is very expensive now, though. It's kind of surprising to me how much just regular window glass is. Oh, yeah. The, one of the stained glass guys was looking at a job course was saying that all the shops he knew that closed that did both making the glass and curving it. So now you usually have to go to like somebody to make it and then somebody to curve it. You were helping Matthew. Yeah, fine, track one down. And there's a house, a uh, caddy corner behind us. It's kind of a copycat house. The style looks very much the same. And they had plywood in their curved glass windows for years. And I noticed the other day they've got glass in them. So I'm going to go put a note on their door and see where they got that or who did that. And the plumber is supposed to be here shortly. I don't know where they are. Where the plumbing is going in in the basement too. Oh, I'd heard fall out. That's not good. <laughs> Coming in. Let me just show you what I've done. So I've been putting that glazing compound up in that rabbit, and when the glass sits in, it will squish it out and fill in all the gaps. 
Well, I've been getting all the glazing compound in the window. They've been measuring and measuring and re-measuring this window, getting ready to make the first cut. Remember, it was built off-site, and the reason they left those horns or ears sticking out is they will cut those here on site to get very precise measurements. The ears are not necessary, but they can provide a little extra stability to the window, so they'd like to leave them as long as possible. The same holds true for that extra length that comes up at the top of the window. And while these windows are relatively identical, there are small differences in the measurement and the fit of these windows. So that's why so much of the spinal assembly has to be done here on site. It's also complicated very much so by the fact that these are set in that arch and are not perpendicular, those side pieces of the frame are not perpendicular. They actually flare out and we'll get into more of that later. These guys work very slowly and very methodically. It has taken a long time to build these frames and they'll only get one shot at the installation. If something gets messed up, they'll have to start all over again. So they are very, very precise and careful in their work. Josh, can you help me flip this glass over? I'm glad I I'm glad I moved that window out of the way because that's where that window yeah, is right. sitting. <laughs> In fact, uh, I think I'll move these others too. Sorry, Joe's not here to film, so. Ben helped me move the glass over. And you can see it's sitting in that glazing and squishing out. So that's going to form a seal and give it some cushion. I'm going to get the glazing points in here. See that glass flies in a little. And get this moved out of the way so they can work. Find my glazing points. I'm going about every six inches. And David the plumber just got here. Joe should be on her way. She's meeting with Johnny Severson and Jen Keel to talk about a big event we're having next October. So it is a busy day. As soon as I get this done, I'll film some more of them doing the windows. We've got three windows to do. So between the three, I'll get some good shots and show you what's going on. But right now, I just want to get this done and give them a better work area and get this window in a safe place. Okay, I've got all the glazing points in and I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off looking for my putty knife that I like and I just found it. It's stuck in the putty. Typical of me. Alright. We don't have much of a flat spot. You want to help me move this? Yeah. We can, we can uh, prop it up there and I'll, I'll paint it over there and then I'll move this out of the way so y'all can have all the space. Let's see. 
Get this cleared out for y'all. This is just time consuming. Everything has to be fit just right. Like I said a curve on a curve, and this is that underneath mm -hmm. the second cell. You can see it's almost got a little pocket. So this will go in and out several times as they try to get everything leveled, propped up. This is that underneath. Got its own Sill. <laughs> Should I hit that with some primer or no? Well, this will this will cover it, mm -hmm. so yeah. so it'll be caulked, and it's not time. going to leak at all because y'all are well, brilliant. Know, when, all the old houses, you know, when they do the siding, they didn't paint the back side. They didn't the do house. anything. Mm -mm. And if you take a piece of cypress or cedar and you paint it all the way around. If moisture does get in there somehow, where's it going no to go? No way out. Okay. You know, you so it almost, needs the space almost, to dry. Yeah, you got you know almost it breathing from the backside. Uh, I'm not say is the only way to do it, but it seems like the old ways they love to do that. Well, the old ways lasted a hundred and something years, so. <laughs> Wide, so I think we have to rip those down, but okay. nothing crazy. The boss is here. <laughs> Cutting the, you can see the pocket where that oh, the old one used to sit in there. Yeah, that's that's really nice. You know, that's really nice. Yeah. So I wanted to keep all that as one unit, but that's not going to work because as soon as we start trying to put it in, you basically have to put this in from the outside and the other one in from the inside. Right. <clears throat> so. Come, come up with a different system to attach it. All right, so the pulleys are going in, and these are brand new. Our old ones weren't salvageable. Sure, pretty. Very nice pulleys. And that is the parting stop? This is, yeah. Okay, trying to make sure I name everything correctly. They're also slow because everything is cut very precisely. They don't overcut the opening for these pulleys to make it easy. They want the fit to be extremely tight, the craftsmanship needs to be perfect on these. They have a lot of pride in what they do. And these are solid brass? They are, yeah. And, and they have a um, bearing in them too, which is almost unheard of in window pulleys. Hardware that you find, where it's actually got a, um, a seal bearing in it. And, uh, I think the, the guys that run SRS hardware, I think they're, I mean, they're one of the very few uh, places you can order and get any type of really quality window hardware mm -hmm. anymore, and they have everything from the chains to the hardware to the, uh, uh, to the glazing. And they work, they work alongside anybody that makes windows or restores them. So if you do enough of it, they even give you, they give you some sort of a, you know, better bulk price than, uh... No. So are they going in as expected? I heard you say you're going to make a few 
adjustments on how you thought you might put them in, but is that just a kind of a minor adjustment? Oh, the, uh, windows? Mm -hmm. No, it's yeah, anything that's that's not just a straightforward. But you know, a lot of the pieces will leave a certain leave them a certain size. Yeah. So you can but but so far them. everything's going well. Yeah, uh, I think so. Kind of how you yeah. expecting? Just a tiny bit. The outside of it's actually fine. It's just maybe the, the router missed a little right down in the thing. So. That's the other nice thing about these pulleys is they um, is it is the is the back of them has a the plate is flat on there. Right so here. Yeah. So your mortise is all one depth. Mm -hmm. You pull any of these other ones out. They have that little curve right there. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about making your life difficult. It's a lot easier to make a jig and cut something out precise like this versus having that little bit of an angle. Because mm -hmm. you brought, I brought the old ones back. Yeah. So I'm going to go into the box and show you how the old one is. So here's the, here's the old one. You can see it next to the new one, what he's talking about. This is flat, or this. Yeah. Apples to apples. This is flat, and this is not, so it's harder to get. But isn't it pretty? Mm -hmm. Now the old ones, sometimes you make a jig with a, it's not like a drill press, it's mm -hmm. a drill press on an angle, you know? You gotta try to make it kind of a pocket for that to sit mm -hmm. in at an angle. See, oh, uh, look, it slopes, an and this is what he was saying. Here. It slopes, so if you yeah. recess it, you have to yeah. do something at an angle and slide it in. It's just a different process. But we will save these and put these on display down in our museum area. And I think these are the only fancy ones we have, although it's hard to tell because everything's so painted over. But this is our box of goodies that I will go lock up with our other goodies. In fact, I'm going to take those right now and get my keys and show y'all the goodie room. Okay, that was very stressful unlocking the door. I don't know about y'all, but my keys are in a certain order on my key ring and everything got taken off to get keys made and they're put back in the wrong order. So I'm going to have to stop and fix that. But here's our special room. There are the cornices that go in the curved alcove miscellaneous light fixtures, the tile from the fireplace, our logs, those fireplace tongs that y'all helped me identify. There's all kinds of goodies in here. We'll come back at some later point and go through in detail and show you all the things we've collected. So David the plumber has got his scaffolding up and they are ready to start working on the bathroom up here. And he just glued up the first joint of this big standpipe. And they'll also bring up the vent stack. So all this is old and will come out. This is the new coming in. And he might be able to cut and reuse some of this pipe but we're not going to trust any of the joints or that it was done correctly. We'll have everything done from scratch. You know, anytime you have a sticking detail on something, yeah. typically it's just done on the piece. I know. It's not an added. And this seems to be on the piece. I, I haven't noticed yeah. it on the sides, but when I turn this around to clean it, so I'm like. I wonder if it was because of the curve. I wonder if they, uh, that, was, that was the way to, because you know, that, these are yeah. exponentially harder to run once you now you have a curved piece and you're trying to run this through your yes. tool. Yes. Uh, now you've just introduced, well, you're going to try to run something. So they ran like, it and then bent it and then glued it in there. Yeah. And then, of course, there's not one on the bottom, so it's only on the top. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to have to wiggle, wiggle that out of there and clean it and put it back. So you learn things too, so next time I have to we just make this piece and yeah. <laughs> attach it. <laughs> so. Yeah, so you want to pull, so we're not going to use any of that at all. Any of that, right. So you're going to pull the toilet 
Yeah. Check the flange. We're going to get a new toilet because that's got, what did you call that? A, 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 that big, oh, it's got a, big, like a Sloan flush valve. It's got a it. riser outside yeah. a column of water, so we, we need to get rid of that and have a tanked toilet. And as far as I can tell, this pipe right here was some kind of floor drain. Or uh, it's, it's got a. a no, right you know what that was? Is that an old gas line? No. So when the house was originally built, every. No, 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 I'm wrong. I'm talking out of turn. Every bedroom had a sink. Oh. But it would have been over there, and this comes in 90s up, right 90s there, up, which is just outside the wall of the bedroom because there's that trapdoor access panel for the right tub. there. Yes, I don't know what I don't know what that was. So there's a plate in the middle of the bathroom floor right next to the toilet. That's the flusher. You stepped on you it, you stepped on it to flush it. So that's that little. So do you want to keep that there? I want to keep the plate there just okay. for looks. Okay. It won't be functional. Okay, well, I'm going to try to leave that. And then I have a sink for in there. I have a pedestal sink for in there. It's okay. down in the basement. Okay. We'll have to carry it up. You're going to get a lot of steps today. You're going the right way? Yeah, go that way. Okay. <laughs> There's two ways. Ah. So that weird thing that 90's up is right this. So I thought that was a mint. And it goes up. That's the water line. That's the water line. Look, yeah, it goes to the look, big storage. They've got, it, they've got it connected right there to a water line. Um, that's two separate pipes. So this is the water line, but this is something different. You think so? That's the one that you had. But that's the one I think that the... I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? So it's connected to this. So is it, does it open a drain that, that makes it flush? Well, this Does it open a valve to, to let water out so that the water can come through the column and flush? So it must be bringing water up to this. I don't know. But I want to leave that in the floor. Okay. Um, and I want a tanked toilet here. Okay. We'll pull this off and see. How far away from the wall? It looks like it's close. If we have to get a 10 inch rough into it, I was going to say you can buy the little ones. This won't really get used much as a bathroom on rare occasion, but it okay. could get used. And all the water's dead, right? Right now the water's dead. So okay. you should not, if, if water starts coming out, there's something I don't know about. Okay. And then you're going to put a pedestal here. I right? have a pedestal here. Oh, yes. And that's what we decided you could come up and try to yeah. get everything from below because there is no access from yeah, it's solid above, it's so solid. Dishes. Yeah, but you were thinking that's where we took the closet out, that that yeah, would. Yeah, I think we can get it from there. Get it from there. Yeah, that's but the tile is sacred. Yes, I understand. <laughs> it looks really nice. It's, it's, it's totally it intact. Been, it's got yeah. like these little holes somebody drilled when they put a stupid formica sink in here and it has a little crack down here. Well, that's not and then it has, I that don't know what would have been there, probably been the that old, old toilet yeah. before this one was put in. But that would, when we do a tank toilet, that will cover yes. that up and you won't, you won't see that or this hole where that column then comes off the outside. And pull those caps off to see what kind of condition the bolts are in. Right. Hopefully they're not rusted through. Oh, you are so optimistic. <laughs> Hopefully they're not rusted through. How long have you been a plumber? Well, I as, just lose faith as in you. Uh, if you think those are not going to be rusted. Yeah. Yeah. We'll save that. <laughs> we save everything. And that'll probably show up as a pair of earrings or something. I'll, I'll make a brooch out of it. There you go. Plumbing is never easy, and plumbing in a 130-year-old house certainly is not easy. 
If it were easy, everybody would be doing it. You got a painter's tool? Uh, I've got all kinds of stuff if you need. Our volunteer Pat just sorted all the tools and they're on this floor. For once, the tools are in the general vicinity of where we need them. Okay, no multi-tool, but I have a baby pry bar and a regular. Or? You're trying to save the toilet though, right? Even though we're not getting I, it. Well, I think so. There, oh, you go. there we go. One brooch. One brooch. See, they're not rusted. Everything was made better then. Yeah, it's not better rusted. Better quality brass. Shocking, shocking. shocking. Looks like they put plaster of Paris on the back side of it to get it to... Yeah, they did, because it's hollow. That's crazy. Oh, your little tiny crescent wrench. Wow, look at that. <laughs> well, that's, that's like a Christmas you miracle. You work on toilets and, that are two years old that don't come off this easily. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you got three washers on there. I mortared it on. Yeah. Yep. This is really cool tile. I know. Any way of knowing how old it is? In 1920 is when they added on. So, and I found a magazine or newspaper ad for a bathroom that looks exactly like this from 1920. So, but I've never seen anything quite like this before. It's certainly non-skid. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, that moved. I think you. And okay, it's not at the way back, which is good. Let's see if we're 12 inches. Looks like 12. I think. Yep. yep, we're good. We did. We got a standard toilet. Thing. And that really wasn't mortar down. That was just, no, uh, just ancient caulk. I'm gonna say old lead pipe that comes up, and they hammer it over, and if somebody shoved a new flange in there. So all that will come out and we'll start over. <laughs> it's not quite as cool as our 1893 toilet, but... <laughs> was that a radiator right there? That was a radiator. What did it, was it off of steam? It had a huge big uh, boiler in the basement, oh, yeah, okay. steam. All right, this is a good place to stop for lunch, Miguel. All right. All right. I feel like you've got I got back from lunch and got right back to it. It was a very busy day. There was a lot going on between the plumbing and the window and just other general happenings at the house. We've also got a meeting going on about different fundraising things and there's our stealthy board member Stephanie behind the board and Johnny, Jared and Joe and our messy table, our messy, messy table. There was a lot going on at the house today so while the plumber was plumbing and the meeting was happening Ben and Josh were still over in the parlor working on those windows and here they are with the window frame they've already got the sash fit 
and taken care of to go in here. Now they're putting on the exterior trim and this will actually be attached once this whole window frame is installed. But before they get to that point, they want to put it together outside of the uh, brick frame and make sure everything fits and goes together and that it's cut right. These are those curved boards or some of those curved boards that Eben did through that steaming process in the shop months ago if not over a year ago now and they need to make sure that everything as I said fits together well before they get this up and into that window opening. Fortunately this piece seemed to be fitting pretty well. That curving of the wood was a very interesting process. If you are new to us, I'd highly recommend you go back to season two and look at episodes 27 and 34 where we go visit McNatt's shop and get a tour of all of the equipment and their capabilities and also in 34 where Eben is actually steam bending this wood. It was quite the process but today we're lucky everything seems to fit. Later on there are some problems and they're going to have to go back and remanufacture a few things using a different way to follow that curb but for now everything seems to be working and hopefully as they get actual experience putting these particular windows in things will speed up but today's been a very slow process with a lot of in and out of this window into the opening to make sure everything's done right. It was such an exciting day to have so many things going on at once. We are finally making very visible progress on the plumbing and it's just an incredible feeling to have these curved windows going back in. That has been like the plumbing about a three year process to get these things to this point. So the house is really at a turning point. We are again under that deadline because we have a couple of fundraising things coming up where we really need those working bathrooms and it would be very nice to have glass in these windows and get the plywood off and have the house looking much nicer. But I'm going to stop for today. We will pick up again with plumbing and more window installation next week. So please follow us. Turn on your notifications so that you can find out when new videos are posted. We're the Lee Kempner House in Galveston, Texas, a nonprofit set up to restore this incredible house. You can check out our website, leekempnerhouse.org. We are an IRS 501c3 nonprofit, which means your donations are tax deductible and you can donate to us there. We really need the support and appreciate all of you watching these videos and all the encouraging comments as we continue on this journey.